Hi guys. So today I think uh, we should quickly take a look at this uh, Energizer power bank. It's a uh, well, yeah, 9,000 milliamp hour uh, power bank. Uh, it's got a little display here in the corner. Uh, the display is backlit, but uh, the, the backlit display stopped working, so you can't really see what the uh, level of charge is on this little device. And then of course it's got another problem. Uh, the 2.1 amp output has uh, stopped functioning, so we can have a look at that as well. And there you can see the model UE10,000. Capacity is 9,000 milliamp hours. It's called the XPAL power. And it's got two power outputs, uh, one 5 volt at 1 amp and another one 5 volt at 2.1 amp. Now to get it open, I suspect you're gonna have to start prying over here. It doesn't have any screws. So uh, let's just see if we can open it up. Uh, I'm suspecting just a few clips. Okay, standard clamshell construction, of course here's the battery pack, and oh, is that two cells? It looks like it. We'll have a look at, uh, closer look at that just now. And I suspect probably all the circuitry is at the bottom here. Over here you can see the uh, little display, uh, LCD display, and we'll just see where that, uh, that backlight sits. And for those playing along at home, here yeah, you can see the uh, what's this? The battery model number: 4548118, 3.8-bolt cell, uh, 4,500 milliamp hours uh, for this uh, specific cell. And uh, there are two of them. You can see the two cells are basically just stacked on top of each other. And here you can see the battery feeds into this little chip, which is likely a protection chip of sorts. We'll have a look at that just now. Uh, and over here you've got the uh, step up. Uh, circuitry to generate the 5 volts from the 3.8 uh, volt cells and then right over here you can see there's the little activation switch and here you've got the uh, little power or little uh, wires running into the the backlight of the display for the uh, for the little LED. There's probably a little LED embedded in here it means we'll have to take this apart and see exactly what's going on there. Now you should be able to see the backlight is a separate element and it uh, sits just behind this uh, LCD display and it's stuck on with some double sided tape at the bottom here. So let me get that out and uh, detach this from the little LCD display. And you can see the backlight is now completely separate from the LCD. The double sided tape is still at the bottom. They didn't even bother to uh, take off the, the, the sticky tape or the sticky part of the front. So it was fairly easy to uh, disassemble. It's just one thing that I uh, think I should do first is uh, to desolder this battery from the rest of the circuit. Uh, this battery uh, can probably deliver quite large amounts of current and we don't want anything to short out here while we're working on it. And just quickly measuring the battery voltage there, yeah, 4.297 volts. Uh, so this battery is fairly well charged. All right, I've just uh, connected my power supply instead of the uh, battery, and uh, let's have a look. Over here, you can see the display. Let's just put the little piece of paper back in here, and uh, let's just press the uh, activation button there. There we go. So just at the current voltage level of my power supply, that's showing uh, that the battery is 88% full. But let's first have a look at the little backlight. Now 
Now the front side of this little backlight is basically just a diffuser and the back side is a reflector and this is what uh, we're going to be tearing off to try and reveal that LED on the inside. And there it is. And that little lead element looks very much as if it is blown or uh, burnt out. It's quite dark. Now we should be able to just tear this out. And now what we really want is to be able to install another little LED that faces inward into this curve so that it can distribute the lighting to the rest of the diffuser. I think we'll just use these same two wires, solder a, a different uh, tiny LED on there and uh, install it in there and see what it does. I have a whole bunch of these uh, surface mount uh, LEDs, like white LEDs, but I think they should do just nicely. Oh, and of course we just need to confirm the uh, polarity here, so, uh, yep, so I just got lucky. This side's the positive, and this side the negative. Yeah, I think that looks good enough. I think we can go ahead and install it into the diffuser. Now to fix it, I think a small dab of clear glue gel would do nicely. Okay, I think we'll just let that sit. And I've just turned out the lights here. Let's uh, feed it a bit of current. There we go. That looks really nice. Hmm, I like that. Now I've got my power supply connected to this little board again. Let's just have a look and see what the current is. Wow! That's 166 milliamps. at 4.05 volts <laughs> no wonder that little LED blue now just looking at the circuit here this is where the positive output is for the LED and that's probably the current limiting resistor this track comes directly from that resistor and uh, I think you can probably better see it better than I can but it looks like a 220 so that's a 2 and a 2 and a 0 multiplier so it's 22 ohms which of course is not enough to limit the current to the uh, LED of that backlight display. So we'll have to modify that uh, little resistor there. Of course I don't have uh, <laughs> any surface mount resistors that are that, uh, that size. So we'll have to do a little bodge here just to be able to get some more resistance into the circuit to limit the current to the backlight display. Alright, so if I set my power supply to 15 milliamps current limit and I set the voltage to 4 volts and I activate the backlight you can see we get a really nice uh, backlight uh, coverage, it's nice and even um, and it's below the specification of that specific white LED so uh, yeah we should try and limit the current to 15 milliamps
Okay, so the output is about 4 volts and the, the lead is about 3 volts so we need to drop about a volt at 15 milliamps so that would be 1 over 15 milliamps and that gives us 66 ohms Right, let me see what I have in my junk box Now in order to remove this uh, little surface mount resistor first I just, uh, I'm going to tin it uh, with normal uh, leaded solder on both sides so that we can easily remove it and my hot air pencil should make uh, quick work of this uh, little component and you can see it's already starting to flow and uh, yeah, that's it and let's just also just quickly tin these two points quick and easy I had a look through my junk box and I just couldn't find any surface mount resistors but I have this very big through hole component, it's a 56 ohm resistor we just have to make it work now as before I'll just use some of this press stick to uh, hold this little component into place in the US they call it blue tech, in South Africa it's called press stick but it's still an all round very handy bit of uh, glue I guess and all we have to do now is just to tack that on make sure it flows nicely and then we can remove the press stick below the resistor and that's it the final step is just to add this little bit of heat shrink sleeving across the or over the resistor just to make it nice and safe and let's just uh, give that a quick blow with a heat gun pencil well wow, that should about do it and next we just have to add the or just solder the back lights uh, the wires back on just give the two pads a tin and uh, give them a quick solder it's a positive and there we do the negative good stuff all done okay I've turned off the uh, studio lights let's uh, feed this some power and give it uh, turn it on there we go now that looks really really good hmm I'm quite happy with that that looks very nice now let's quickly test the uh, outputs uh, you can see the this first output that's the one and one amp uh, output it's 5.15 5.16 volts so that works well uh, I think this is the one that uh, doesn't work let's quickly uh, test that turn it on yeah, and you can see it's dead. There's nothing com coming out of here. Let's take a few measurements and see what the problem might be. Okay, so I'm measuring the output voltage here, and I'm actually measuring 5.18 volts. So there doesn't seem to be any electrical problem with uh, the circuit. So I suspect it's more of a mechanical issue, perhaps, on the, uh, on the USB socket itself. Alright, so I'm going to do my best with the focus here but you should be able to see the leftmost contact which is the positive pole of the USB socket is a bit corroded and uh, it's also, it looks like it's sunken down if you just compare it to the other uh, contacts of the socket definitely something wrong with that contact there Alright, so I just sort of wiggled that little contact and uh, it just fell right out of the socket it was uh, definitely completely disconnected from the rest of the uh, of the socket uh, looking at the socket itself you can see it's actually quite a specialized type of USB socket uh, type A um, it's in line with the PCB um, still sort of surface mounted but uh, not on the surface of the PCB it's in line with the PCB um, it's going to be difficult to source a socket like this um, but I think now that we know exactly what the issue is we uh, don't have to troubleshoot this further there's no electrical issue and we can uh, see if we can source this socket at a later stage but I think we can put it back together for now alright just before we go let's have a quick look at this chip right at the end here it's an XB80896 and that's a short circuit detection chip uh, it basically just cuts off power when a short circuit is detected 
and uh, to recover that uh, disconnection you have to disconnect the battery and reconnect it and then uh, it will be uh, working again that will effectively reset the chip okay so looking at the rest of the power bank it's a nice solid design it's not over spec'd the capacity as stated earlier is rated at uh, 9000 milliamp hours that comes from the two 4500 milliamp hour batteries uh, of course with uh, efficiency loss in the step up circuit the 5 volt uh, output capacity will not reach uh, 9000 milliamp hours but uh, I think almost all manufacturers actually deliver their specifications like that in other words they base it on the capacity of the internal cell okay guys I think we can put this power bank back together Alright guys, uh, if you uh, enjoyed these types of videos, please give me a nice big thumbs up so that I can continue making them. See you next time.